Welcome to the program. Air pollution can affect our intelligence and mental health. That's according to a new study out of China. Researchers say that chronic exposure to heavy pollution can cause harm to our cognitive performance. Let's just have a look at some of those numbers. The study monitored about 20,000 people in China over the space of four years. In that time, the participants were asked 24 maths questions and 34 word recognition questions, ranging from easy to difficult ones. The results found the participants had trouble answering the harder questions over time, with less educated men the most vulnerable of all. And researchers say that's because of the air they're breathing. The report also found people may become more impatient or uncooperative when exposed to heavily polluted air. Now I'm joined here in the studio by Dr. Robin Russell-Jones, who has written a number of medical publications on the health effects of air pollution. And our science correspondent, Palab Ghosh, is also here with us. Palab, I'll come to you first. Just tell us a little bit more uh, about these findings. Well, Yelda, th this is absolutely fascinating because while there's been overwhelming evidence to suggest that air pollution can harm health, respiratory diseases, this is um, the largest of a handful of studies that have been coming out that indicate that it might have an effect on cognition. Now, um, on the face of it, the results are quite alarming. The researcher involved said that uh, he felt that air pollution had a huge effect, uh, perhaps putting back education by a year in the worst affected men, and that it gets worse as you get older. But if you make a big claim, you have to have a lot of evidence to back it up. And what he's done is he's correlated test results with air pollution levels. Now, what you need to do in epidemiological studies, because that's what it is, is to find out what other factors might also have influenced it, whether people are disproportionately poor in polluted areas, whether they're disproportionately malnourished or, uh, or educated less or smoke. There's a whole host of reasons that need to be teased out. And it's not clear uh, whether... The researchers have done that, they may well have done that, but it's not clear from the paper. But it's certainly um, a question that needs to be answered and it's an old adage, more research is necessary. Uh, Dr Russell-Jones, what do you make uh, of the science that's presented here? Well, it hasn't come out of the blue. I mean, there have been a number of studies published, particularly from America, uh, which have shown quite strong correlations between air pollution and a variety of effects on intelligence, particularly in children. Um, there's one study that showed that people who were exposed to high levels of pollution uh, had delayed development of white matter in the brain. Um, there was another study from New York where they looked at pollution exposure of pregnant women who were non-smokers uh, and they measured uh, the level of a particular particulate that they were exposed to during pregnancy. And this was correlated quite strongly with mental health problems in their offspring. And the problems didn't really appear until they were sort of primary school age. So there are other studies that have shown correlation between air pollution and dementia in the elderly. We, so we have this Chinese study showing a correlation in adults. And then there are studies showing correlations in children. So it's a sort of a picture that's building up. Mm. If you ask me what is the pollutant that's causing the problem, uh, the most likely are these small particulates because they go down to very small sizes, nanoparticles, and they therefore can penetrate into the bloodstream, they can penetrate into tissue, they can cross the blood-brain barrier. So um, if one had to sort of speculate as to what was the most likely pollutant, then small particulates would be at the top of the at list. The but top of the list. As Gallup Ghosh says, there's a lot of research that needs to that be done. That still needs to be done. Well, let's yeah. just um, have a look at some of those uh, pollution statistics. The World Health Organization says 7 million people die annually from exposure to polluted air and that 91% of people worldwide live in places where the air quality exceeds the World Health Organization guideline limits. 14 Indian cities are among the world's 20 most polluted. The northern city of Kanpur tops the list. Um, doctor, I'll come back to you on this. I mean, of course, um, what we know is that there are no safe levels of pollution that we can live uh, with. But the point that Palab um, makes about this particular report is that they don't necessarily um, take poverty into account. Do you agree? Um. Obviously, if you're doing an epidemiological study of this type, you have to control for other factors. 
I mean, I haven't read the report in great detail. I don't know how they did that. Some of the other studies I mentioned have taken that into account. The WHO guideline for particulates is 10 micrograms per cubic meter of air. And in London, 91% of the population in central London are exposed to levels above 10. Uh, in central London, they're exposed to levels around twice the WHO limit. So it, it is a worrying situation. The sort of findings in China would also apply to a lesser extent in the UK. And just picking up on that uh, point, Palab, that this is comparable right across the world. Whether we know whether it affects our mental ability or not, more research needs to be done. The fact is that pollution is increasing and it's bad for us. It's bad for us, particularly in developing countries, because the top 20 most polluted cities are in developing countries. The argument for reducing pollution levels is already overwhelming. But it, if there is a chance that it might be affecting our intelligence as well, that research does need to be done. Um, and to tease out whether it's the pollution or other factors that's doing that, um, it'll make the case even more urgent. And uh, Doctor, what needs to be done now? What do governments need to do? What action? Well, we were faced with an identical situation about 35 years ago when we discovered that a lead was being added to petrol and that was a potent neurotoxin it was affecting children's behavior and affecting children's intelligence so we have a sort of analogous situation sort of 35 years down the line um, i have to say that in the 80s we had a conservative administration and margaret thatcher was a scientist and she was actually very quick uh, into understanding exactly what the problem was and the government accepted the need for lead-free petrol in 1983 this government's been far more reluctant to accept that air pollution is a problem, even though the evidence is equally strong in terms of people's general health. So I think, um, I think really it's the government. They have got a strategy for reducing pollution, but it seems to consist mainly of devolving responsibility to the councils uh, and then restricting what they can actually do about it. So I think the government needs to take the lead on this. Yeah. Dr. Robin Russell-Jones and Palab, thank you both for joining us here on the programme. Now, let's go to other stories making headlines here on Impact.